everybody remembers the, the, the fastest in the class, the tallest in the class, the bad boy of the class, or the slowest in the class. And it's like, after 10 years, people still remember that reputation of things. And I think about five years ago, I kind of understood that anal analogy to the point where I'm like, well, what reputation do I want to have 10 years from now? And I started acting like it. Welcome to the Savo Show. We have uh, Raw Nelson. Raw. It's three letters, the first three letters of my first name, which is Rawri. Rawri is Māori for David. Yeah. In Polynesian, New Zealand. Oh, see. Language. There you go. There you go. Yeah, Welcome to Perth, bro. Thank you, brother. And for everybody at home, uh, I met Raw through uh, Steez and Rack, big man. Yep. Um, and uh, one of the men, many, many talents behind uh, Juicy Fest. You're a many talents behind many things. You've got your uh, energy drink. Um, yeah, Juicy's coming up in January mm -hmm. after having a sellout first season in this start of this year. Mm -hmm. That was mad. January, yeah. 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 So, um, and yeah, being involved with that was, was dope. And uh, yeah. Uh, so, let me, let's educate the audience. Let's talk about where you, where you came from. Like, where's me. all this, where's all this drive? Um, that's normally the first thing people ask and I think I've, <laughs> I've like talked about it so many times where I can probably articulate it a bit yeah. more simply. Good for me. Um, so I'm uh, obviously, by the looks of my haircut, <laughs> I am a Polynesian Maori from a place called Otrua, Whakarewere, which is a small village in Otrua, which is in like the heart of the North Island of New Zealand. And I guess back then, uh, what's really uh, dr drilled into us at, a, at such an early age is culture within culture is identity and understanding who we are, where we come from, who our ancestors are, what they did to kind of give us opportunities based on what we have today. And I guess that's a massive fueling factor for what I do today. Okay, so I think, um, so what that involves during your childhood is a lot of like um, performing arts because we don't come from uh, money. Um, we, we are taught different ways to utilize our currencies, which is our talents, to do performing arts for tourists. They come into our village, and then from there, uh, we, we learn how to navigate, uh, let's just say a busload of Chinese people to make them kind of react in a, in a positive manner to kind of, you know, reward us in, whether it's money or attention or like just tourism, right? Yeah. So I guess that, that's where I come from. So I come from a small village where we're taught to hunt, uh, fish, perform, but also love. And I guess I've, I've, I've tapped into like uh, different ways of utilizing those skill sets and those uh, those ways to leverage into, to, to, into what I do today, which is some people call it business, but I say I, I've just been doing people for 33 years. So it's just like, um, I guess when it comes to business, key factors or key elements with business or when you're working with people or um, doing something is like you need a baseline of like people like that's the that's the core of doing anything really because 100 percent of customers or business partners or you know people you work with to custom experience is just based on people and yeah, psychology. you don't have people you don't have business mm -hmm. mm. so i think that's just kind of like what i like to compare it to so yeah anyways well that's that's kind of just like a uh brief understanding of where I come from, brother. Yeah. You, you mentioned uh, wasting leverage and and not and, and, and using it in in the now as you grow older. Mm -hmm. um, fast forward to now, you're definitely doing that super well. Yeah. But going back to that, you know, your origins and I see a lot of people having skills and culture from where they come from and they waste it. They waste that leverage. Yeah, I think they waste it because they don't actually know or understand that that's the key. I learned it was the key when I was probably 25, 24 years old when I was overseas and I was in an environment where I'm not from, but also I see myself being a little bit different. And then that point of difference created more opportunity because a lot more pe people were curious about me. You know, and I was acting normal. If I was in New Zealand, then everybody's acting the same, whether it's like the way you hold yourself, the way the types of jokes you say, or the way you kind of behave in general. Now, when you put that same behavior within a new environment where it's kind of not really like that there, then you, you quickly, um, I guess it gets noticed. And people only do what they know how to do. So how are you supposed to kind of like know that you're different if you're in a, in a pool of people that are the, kind of the same? Yeah. 
So I guess yeah. my, the privilege of what I've been through, bro, is I had the opportunity to travel the world um, because my mother sent me to Australia when I was 17. And then from there, when I was working in the mines, um, I accumulated enough funds to travel. And then I put myself in a situation where I was able to experience more and then understand that I was a lot different than a lot more people around the world. And then New Zealand become that much smaller and tighter to me. So it makes sense here. Yeah. 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 No, I love it. I love it. I've, I've got similar... Similar backgrounds, migrating from Russia, I was already different. Mm -hmm. Not not speaking the English language was, you know, a huge difference. Um, but then being taller than everybody, you know, everybody's like, oh, you should play basketball, you know, play footy. Played footy for a bit. Um, that was all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, but you can relate, right? You can see that, like, yeah. back then, you know, it's, it's a superpower being different. And I think the way the world's going now, everyone's trying to be the same, but eventually, you know... Being different is the key to fucking. Oh man, I don't know why people are trying to be the same. It's I just don't get it. I I was, you know, more in a shell for a while growing up because I didn't want to get you know, bullied or, mm. you know, picked on for being different. I think me, I was the same too. I was really, like, believe it or not, um, like now I'm the most social person you ever meet. I'm actually going to Canberra tomorrow by myself to create a community around the idea of Juicy Fest because we just launched it in Canberra. Yeah. But then if you looked at me as a child, I actually had my sisters speak for me when I used to walk around the school. And I was very shy and I was very kind of like um, anxious about what people thought and I didn't like to talk. And my sisters actually, you know, were the ones that kind of empowered me to talk. But then my mum had to uh, put me in a different class just so I'll stand on my own two feet. But now I'm the total opposite. But I think I just went through a metamorphosis where – you know, I built the person that I am today. You know, we'll probably touch base on that later, but yeah. Love that, love that. The um, the challenges you went through to overcome not talking because your sister was talking. You, yeah. You popped up. Did you, did you have a moment before you moved over overseas, before 17, where you realised, oh, shit? Not really, bro. Like, I think when I talk about that, my sister's talking, that was like when I was like under 10 mm -hmm. or like under 8. Um the moment, like, I still didn't know. My mum knew. That's what I understand. It's just like... now. Your parents I kinda, always knew first. Yeah, for sure. Of course they do. But you don't know then. But at the same time, I kind of revisit um, situations or thoughts or moments in my past and I start to re-understand them based on the new mindset I have. You know, because back then, you, you kind of, as I said, you people only do what they know or they only know what they know. Therefore, um, I like to go back and kind of revisit moments where there was problems that happened in my family or even why things happened in the first place or why I even moved. When I revisit it, I kind of just recalculate it to kind of like put a new meaning to why it happened. Yeah. So to answer your question, when I was 17, nah, I think I got into a fight for my actually 18th birthday. Um, and then my mother knew that she had to send me to Australia just to take me out of that environment because that was normal where we come from, to go out party, to end up in a fight. But it happened more regularly where she knew it was the right move for me to expose me to more opportunity. And I guess she was the one that actually taught me how to, to, talk, to talk to people. Yeah. Um, I just watched, watched what she does. And then I guess she still does it till today. But like, I'm just more of a byproduct of what she embodied. Yeah. And I guess when you, when you, when you take that and then you infuse it with identity to a, to a high level, which is like it creates confidence in like anything really. So, yeah. Yeah, I love that. When I when I was growing up, my mum always said, um, "Don't worry about other people, because mm -hmm. those people will be nobodies later later on." But yeah. be nice to them, because if they are someone, they'll remember that. Yeah, for sure. Nobody remembers the the bad ones. Well, everyone. I like to say this thing, bro. Like everybody remembers the, the the fastest in the class, the tallest in the class, the bad boy of the class, or the slowest in the class, and it's like. After 10 years, people still remember that reputation of things. And I think about five years ago, I kind of understood that analogy to the point where I'm like, well, what reputation do I want to have in 10 years from now? And I started acting like it. And I started building it from then. So I yeah. think exactly that, like, um, you have to go through experiences to kind of actually understand it. It can make sense, but until you actually experience it, do you actually know? You know? So um, for sure, I think at the end of the day, like when you kind of just realize that even back then, like people still act like kids now and try and like jeopardize shit or talk shit or whatever it is. I take myself back to the feeling of happiness and fulfillment. And I think everybody's just trying to chase that feeling for themselves. 
and if they behave accordingly or if they try and like you know they act out of uh, re- or they react out of emotion or they're trying to do some dumb shit it's just them kind of like you know projecting what they feel inside but at the same time it's just like they just want what you have which is their feeling and i know they're kind of you know it's just like yeah it's um it's interesting bro so i've learned how to deal with that and i guess a lot more people you know i had a conversation to someone the other day about how do you deal with that when it comes to what is when people talk about you or people kind of you know so it's dope that you actually um understand that to a level two brother yeah i when people talk about me i mean most of the time it's positive majority of the time it's positive when it's negative i know that the majority is still positive mm-hmm. and i'm cool with that mm. this is always going to be negative mm. somewhere down the line and it doesn't bother me anymore it never really did bother me that um, I know who I am, I know what my mindset is, mm-hmm. and if someone's mindset is different, cool. So be it, yeah. So be it. I think on the last podcast I was on like a few years ago, there was a very basic analogy around like um, if, you, if you believe in something, then it must be true because like people fear the fact it might be true, but if it isn't, then don't worry about it. And you, yeah. you got to channel your thoughts to, to kind of focus on the people that actually want the best for you and if you listen to someone that doesn't know you, then you're taking, we call, like to call it mana. So we take the heart or the mana or the soul away from the people that actually mean well for you. And why listen to anyone else? Yeah. So regardless, it's not going to stop, brother, but you can't stop rumors. You can control them. So you become the maestro. Yeah, yeah. For me, belief, um, I like to look at it until I'm 100% certain and then it's just no longer belief. It's, it's, it is. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, um, belief, belief is like the, the idea of like something that doesn't exist. Yeah. When, when you know something, it does. Yeah. You know, so I believe in things, but at the same time, I know a lot. Mm. And when you know something, like, you know, you, it's a feeling. Knowing something's not even a, it's, it's a word to describe a feeling. Mm. And you know something so, so much, it's just like nothing can shift your thought uh, based on what you know because you're that confident in that because you have your own way of like understanding it and knowing how to execute or just even if it sounds crazy yeah yeah that's why I speak from a lot of confidence from what I what I've done and, and the things that I talk about with other people I've done them mm-hmm. or I've seen them happen so there's no doubt in my mind there's no belief and if I do have belief I want to chase the no I want to chase the yep that's definite <laughs> Well, that's, definite. That, that's one thing I said about you, bro. So I've known you for how long? I've met you, I've known you for a bit, but I met you a few days ago. Yeah. But I think you're really, really, really smart at what you do because you you can tell the difference between someone telling you what you want to hear versus someone knowing what they're actually saying. You know? That's that's a gift. Yeah. Thanks, man. Thanks, man. Yeah. It is it is a gift though. Like you analyze, you can analyze something quickly, but most people. I see it, it, they don't analyze it quick enough and they just believe or they don't believe or they just go, what? And then for me, oh, I, again, going back to my mum, she's got the sixth sense. She knows like all the way through high school and my early, early adult life, she was my filter. She goes, he's full of shit. She's full of shit. Yeah. She's not good for you. Well, then no, bro. And where, where, where's she now? She's still teaching in Cal. Um, who's Cal? Cal Gooley. Oh, okay. 600k yeah, okay. yeah. east and no, my no. um yeah i want to bring her here but i know as soon as we have kids she'll be she'll be off to the races here yeah, yeah, for sure. but um yeah she's very traditional russian lady she is westernized a little bit mm-hmm. but at the core we're both russian like yeah, for sure you, can't, people, you can't change that no nah, when people come yeah. to me they're like but you lived in australia most of your life why do you say that you're russian i'm like because that's my heritage that's where i'm from yeah. and it's different yeah. I like that. And yeah. I don't get upset if they start talking about all that Ukraine, Russia shit. I'm just like, tell me more about, about Crimea. And then they shut up because they don't even know what that is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah sure. it's just, just like ignorance, you know. But yeah. like going back to mum's sixth sense, she just, she just knows. Yeah, yeah, she sure. knows. And she said to me, my grandpa, um, before he passed away, he'd always say, you need, to, you need to get out of there. You need to go move somewhere like she always wanted to move to Australia. And grandpa always said, Sev's got something in him that he's going to do different. Like he's going to do amazing things. And when you hear that from your mum, you're like, oh yeah, 
Yeah, Every sure. mum says that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then you start believing. But now I've seen me do different things, amazing things. Yeah, that I, brother, eh? yeah. They're like, no disrespect to my mates that I've that I've known from high school. Like they, they do their own things. Man, I'm doing some cool shit. And and it's I'm only a 32. Don't I don't know the whole like I want to ask you the next question is uh, you, you you're manifesting or you or you are the person that you want to be known for in 10 years time. Mm-hmm. I'm still I'm still unsure. Yeah. Like definitely want to be respected, everybody does. Mm-hmm. Um but I think the one true thing I really want to do is um have the kids that I have the attention of now grow up to then remember me and go Man, I watched your videos yeah, back in the day yeah, yeah. and I still watch some of your stuff now. It's helped me so much. And like I don't I don't associate my success with vanity metrics like likes and followers and stuff. Mm-hmm. I measure them from the people that come to me when they take a photo mm. of what they say. If it's just oh the response, brother. Yeah, the sure. response. And it's the specific response I'm after, because then that's the legacy. Mm-hmm. So yeah. But yeah, your future vision, by the way. Hence the question. What is it? What's your what's your big plan? Uh, you have like a that, yeah. That was, that's the that's a big question, bro. My my actual goal is to become a teacher, but I want to become a teacher where I don't need to be paid to do it, mm. and I probably won't even study to do it. Philanthropic no. teacher. Nah, just like I like I like teaching kids. Yeah, like you know, I just like being around like that sort of stuff. So mm. I I want to be a part of. So based on what I do now, bro, like I've always I didn't know how to articulate it back in the day, but it's just like I knew how to do it, so I just started doing it. Essentially, what I'm trying to do is I'm going to create an ecosystem globally so I can provide kids with opportunity. Back when I was a kid, I didn't understand how you can get into the NBA or build the infrastructure in Dubai yeah. or dig for sapphire in Afghanistan. You kind of just are projected based on the people around you, what they understood, mm. but also what the media say. So a big driving factor of me traveling the world now and Meeting people is me understanding where the problems are and where the opportunity is because I understand my skill set is people and I know how to build communities and walk into any room and shift energy. And I know how to kind of connect with people and also find problems and create solutions. So based on what I do, whether it's festivals, the energy drink or anything that I'm a part of, it might look like I'm doing a lot, but I'm actually just doing one thing. Problem that solving. Will, problem solving, but also bridging the gap towards yeah. people and opportunity. Man, I'm I'm the same. Yeah. I'm the same. It, it, it really is the core, eh? Yeah, for sure. Mm. But I think that's like, uh, I learned this a few years ago when I was like, oh, if I wasn't being paid to do something, then will I be like, what will I be doing? I'll be like, I'll, I'll still be doing what I'm doing, but I'll just be doing it like unconsciously because mm. it's just how I am as a person. What I, about, sorry, what about when you, when, you, when you have that in you and you see a problem in front of you between someone and it's clear for you, but it's not clear for, for them? Do you come in and, and give them your advice or do you wait yeah. for them to ask? Yeah, I always wait to ask, bro, because I don't think I know more than anyone. Yeah, I, yeah. I just use myself as more of a vessel to kind of articulate what I've been through and how I kind of solved it. Yeah. And I Let guess, them come to you. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Like, like you got to build a reputation for for what people actually know you as. Like, it's not until, like, the last six months to a year do people take – well, I'll say six months. Like, does anyone really take me seriously based on my ideas and shit? Like three years ago, bro, I was the same person, had the same ideas, but I didn't have the credibility. Therefore, no one wanted to listen. I was always willing to kind of share my thoughts and also share my perspective, share my ideas. No one gave a fuck. You know, so I guess now I keep moving and then a lot of what I'm doing is moving weights and it has momentum. Hmm. And now people are going, oh, yeah, how would you do that? But now once you build that reputation, then it's just like you create the credibility and I'm traveling the world a lot because now I have that to kind of leverage to create more opportunities. And to answer your question before that, so say my ultimate goal, bro, is I want to create pathways for starting, like, because I'm indigenous from my from my lands. I want to make it easier for all kids in New Zealand to be provided with opportunity, whether it's sports, whether it's in fashion, whether it's an in infrastructure or anything, and kind of like create an under, like a, a realistic sort of way to articulate that they can do anything and that's why i created this drink which is home energy and this is my vehicle to kind of provide a value proposition to any industry that i walk into 
So it's just like, it's just more of a vehicle for me to be a part of things. If I didn't have that, I would just be a man with an idea. Mm. Now that I'm with it, I was able to kind of enter the, the event scene because uh, I met people that were already doing it. And then I was able to provide them value based on what I was doing in the community I had. And then we come together, we create a juicy fest. Yeah. So it's, it was a team thing because the people that I work with have already been doing it. People go, oh, how did you start that? I was like, I didn't. We did together. Yeah. Because people had the resources. People had the experience. I had what I had. which Team was effort. For sure. Mm. Anything. So moving forward, I think the short answer to the question is what do I want to do? What, not what, what do I want to do? What will I do three to five years from now? Is I'll create an ecosystem of pathways for kids or people that are like any age or even businessmen, talent, opportunity anywhere in the world based on what they do. And I don't have to be from the industry to do so. I just know the people and have built the trust of the people that control it. Yeah. And they create that solid infrastructure where there's no snakes yeah, and it's, sure. it's done f- through integrity. Yeah. yeah. And because I'm not from the industry, it's like I have a different perspective yeah. on a lot of things. And at the same time, it's just like I don't want to be the biggest promoter in the world. I don't want to be the biggest distributor in the world. I don't want to be the, the, the best athlete in the world. I'm trying to find pockets of opportunity where it needs help so I can bridge that gap. Yeah. And at the end of the day, it's just like I'm – I'm building relationships and that's what I'm focusing on with no agenda. But then when the problem happens, I know someone that can solve it and I help solve that problem by bridging the gap. Yeah. It's the best feeling. Hmm. But I, I don't even know if anything like that exists, bro. So it's just like, I just, it's just common sense to me. So that's just kind of how I behave. There are, I've seen models of it exist, but not in the way that you're talking about. I've actually got an ebook coming out, my first book. Um, next month and it's pretty much my life story in 26 pages where I'm from where I went to then what happened and then pivoting a couple Mm -hmm. times and then escaping the nine to five doing my thing and now the journey into financial freedom Mm -hmm. because that will help me do similar things where I can just go around to schools and do what you do, bro. Yeah. You're a teacher, yeah? Yeah. yeah. I, read, I read a Google review on my uh, school just before. Um, what was it? School's great, but the only thing I'd change is bring Mr. Moz back. And I'm yeah. like, my guy. Oh, you read it. You're not right here. <laughs> Sorry for the interruption, but this show would not be possible without the help of Bright Tank Brewery. They are the major sponsor of the Sevo Show. Huge shout outs to them. Check them out. Great beers, great people. Great everything and, uh, well, let's get back to the episode. Well, if you're anything like the way you are now, bro, you'll be a, you'll be a dope teacher. Yeah. yeah I I like uh, – I love the – well, me we used to be a teacher. The, inf- the education system's no good. And I realised when I was in it that the only way that I could change it was from the outside in. So disrupting it. Um, you know, looking at someone like Elon Musk and building his own school yeah. and how – Well, that's what, that's what I was going to say, bro. Yeah. So I said, oh, I'm not going to study to be a teacher, but I'll, I'll just build the school. Yeah. For me, I say this all the time, but um, I'd have three things in, in my school. The first one is you start to learn self-awareness. Mm-hmm. You mix that in with self-esteem and you get to get onto a path. And speed isn't important, but – being aligned to something that you're passionate about sooner than later would be cool. But then whilst you do that, you learn the second pillar, which would be financial uh, fitness. And that's where the maths comes in. You learn any, everything about um, how to financially better yourself. Periodization. Yeah. Is it the word to use? Periodization. Yeah. 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 Statistics, percentages, um, everything to do with tax, Everything to do with savings, everything to do with my keyword is investing. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the third pillar is pivoting, the art of pivoting. The art of pivoting is something that people realize that they need to do it later, but they don't have the financial backing because they've, their debt is just through the roof. Mm. But their self-awareness is there and they want to pivot. They want to change to something else because their self-awareness is coming out. And by then what happens? Midlife crisis. Mm. 
they realize, fuck, this is not what I want to do. I've got a mortgage. I've got a family. I've got kids. I can't, I can't be selfish right now. I have to commit. And there's a lot of depression, suicide because of that. It all starts at the core, I reckon. For sure. That's what I would change. Like, it makes sense, man. Like, yeah. So you're passionate about that. Yeah. You know? And it's just like, I guess it's massive when it comes to the, a lot of the conversations that I have with the people in New Zealand as well. They don't have that. Like, even I'm not the best at understanding that. It's just like I'm like understanding financial fitness, for example. I just know how to do shit. Yeah. But, like, a lot of what I know how to do is I know what I'm shit at. Yeah. And because I'm Self awareness. Yeah. I mean, if I know what I'm shit at, I know where to find people that are really, really passionate. Yeah. And good about what I'm shit at. I'm getting good at that too. I'm getting, I'm starting to really identify like there's a job coming up. I'm not going to be the best at this job, but I know someone that is. Yeah. And I'm, you know, the monetization part is understanding the business side where you can take a kickback. Everybody wins because mm. you, you, you take a connector fee. And I'm really becoming a more of a connector, which is what I love. Um, but you can, then there's sustainability. Once you sustain something like that, then you can scale it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And I think that's what you're trying to do here, right? It's just like you're figuring out a way to create an ecosystem because it like takes five years to build a power plant, mm. but once it's going to hit the switch, <laughs> and that's, power. You know what I mean? it's, but yeah. it's just, and it's just like that's what I yeah. guess that's the way I visualize something. It's like, yeah, it's taken five years to kind of understand what I need, who I need mm. to build the machine, and now I just recently turned it on, and then shit's moving. Yeah, and then, it, I mean, one of my biggest challenges was finding reliable people that wouldn't let me down. Yeah, that, but, that's, that's fucking huge, bro. But then also being the reliable person that doesn't let other people down mm-hmm. because, like, um, a couple of days ago I had a, a job. Yesterday, actually, I was meant to film with the gym and the day before I bailed because I was going to really be disappointed in myself down the line. And a few other things happened that were out of my control that I needed to reschedule. Mm -hmm. And then I thought, no, I can't do this to them. So I just needed a bail, give them a full refund. And then, yeah, they sent me an email saying they were disappointed. And I'm like, fair enough. But I knew deep down inside, had I committed, it wouldn't have been the best outcome for them. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't have been my best performance. And it would be in the back of my mind going, I can do better than this. And yeah, so I don't know. It's just something that was... Bro, you have to the moment. learn, bro. Yeah, you know, you I do. think one thing I'm really learning now is just like the, the transparency and communication side of things when it comes to that. Like the pride makes you commit and just try and do it, but at the same time, if it's not going to be the quality that you, if you're not going to do what you say you do, you don't do it, then that's kind of worse. It's worse. Yeah, that's yeah. my pride. That's yeah. where my pride's at. If I if I can't execute the way that I wanted to, they say, oh, just give it a go. Yeah, but I want to make a masterpiece, not a sketch drawing. Mm. Yeah, but um, cool, you're going into you know your second season of of Juicy. How um, how are you making or how are you helping? <laughs> there it is. Do you like it? Yeah, bro, I love it. <laughs> you're um, how are you making it better than the first one? Um, we. Yeah, I love oh, that. I say, I say that shit all the time. Yeah, so it's how, just like there's, how are you guys? Like there, there's, I was telling you, bro. Like the team in New Zealand, they're beasts. Like it's just like the partners over there, they're they're the best. They're, they're going to become the big biggest in the world, bro. I've spoken to them every single day, and it's just like the vision that they have, it's crazy. I'm just a part of what, like, and saying that, like, I'm just a part of what they're doing, right? Because I'm trying to exacerbate what's already existing. Now, it's better because it's obviously a better lineup. I like, but wouldn't say a better lineup because it's a bigger lineup, and I think it's a bit more you know, to date and a lot more people know about it. So I guess the atmosphere is going to be crazy. Yeah, younger? Like the, this time, younger but also the same age. Like it's going to be like a big factor of what happened last year is people thought it was a massive scam, bro. At the same time, people don't know this. It's just like, but we played on the fact that they thought it was a scam for the hype because Fire Festival was out. Oh, the Fire Festival. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then we're all over the news, all over the, the Courier Mail, that sort of stuff. And, you know, because it had never happened before, um, but we leverage that weight as momentum, you know? And I say, like, when you're fighting a bigger guy, what do you do? It's like, well, you use gravity. 
So you can't stop what the people are saying, but at the same time, they're going to be talking at the dinner table with their family that don't care about R&B, but now they know about it. So it's going from you, the one lady that's talking, that likes R&B, that's talking shit. Yeah. But then now your whole family knows about it and we mm. didn't even have to kind of tell them. You're yeah. telling them. So it's amazing. You're thinking about it before bed, you know? <laughs> yeah. Good night. Um, but I guess... Um, Doing nine shows across two countries, obviously the logistics side of things. So it's like even taking hundreds of people across that logistically. Yeah, that, that's crazy. So it's just like trial and error for that. There's a lot of things we want to fix up, like the whole experience itself. And I know there's, there was a, there's a bit to fix in regards to like where things were placed. Um, everything really. So everything from the toilets to VIP, VVIP, to accessibility, to ticketing, to the way in, everything. And then there's the actual artists themselves. So, yeah. How big is your team? I don't even know, bro. Like, I, only, I just focus on what I have to do and I just build communities. Yeah. You know, so I'm in Perth. I've been here for three days, bro, and I've, I've spoken to about 50 different companies about the idea of collaboration. Um, and I focus on marketing. And I just focus on what I'm doing. It's mm. probably like over 50. Yeah. You know? So, and at the same time, when the actual festival's on, there's probably hundreds. So there's like laborers and all that sort of stuff. So yeah. that's someone else's department. What's a, what's your kind of pro tip to approach a business to come up with some sort of collaboration? With me? With anyone. With anyone. Um, you have to go in with the idea to help and provide a value proposition before you take. So you understand what they need help with because currency comes in many ways. And what we have, they don't have what they have, we have. For example, if I come into your, I went to a burger joint the other day. Um, upper hand? Upper hand burger, yeah. Yep. So I'm going to create a juicy burger um, for December, January. So I went in there just providing them uh, some ticket giveaways for the community. So we're full experience, right? So by doing that, we get access to their currency, which is a database of people that are in the community. So we need outreach to people in the community and we have excitement. So based on a conversation, it's like we're exchanging currencies based on what we both need. Yeah. Exactly that. So I didn't go on saying, let's sell tickets through your place. I said, can I please provide you with some tickets to give yeah. away to your people? And what do you think about that? It's amazing. And I was like, okay, so this is what I want out of it. I just want outreach and also awareness to your people. Is that okay? Yes. Easy as that. So understanding what they need help with and if you have a resource or something that they can benefit from what they can utilize effortlessly then that's what we do well that's what i do love it i love it i've got some ideas of how we can leverage this episode to potentially get some more attention to it but also sell tickets mm -hmm. um and i'll talk here to you about that afterwards but yeah i love that stuff i love i love the ability to um this too <laughs> yeah um i love the ability to create those synergies but I also stress sometimes, like, what if it doesn't work? What, what, how does that go through your mind? Bro, I'm numb. Like, <laughs> I've, like, I've had more things go wrong than go right. So it's just like, you will never see me give a fuck about failing. Like, my, my growth come from my biggest fails, well, small and big. So I'm not scared to fail. If anything, I know I'll be better because I failed so much. But and I think that's like I have a reputation of that. I have a reputation of like fucking resilience, bro. So like people know that I'll never stop because it's too predictable. But I know that if you can – so I had a restaurant, right, and it eventually went to shit during COVID. But like that was before the festivals. And I took the same lessons and applied it to something 10 times bigger and it worked. I didn't move backwards. I moved forward because now I'm doing something bigger than fucking running a restaurant. Makes sense? So it's just like understanding what the lesson is and how can you kind of like move forward and take those those lessons and apply it to something 10 times bigger, 20 times You gotta times will bigger. your way to success. Yeah. Take all the little t learning curves from each part. I did the same thing. I remember when I started personal training, I called it extensive fitness. Extensive. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, no, that's good. I was a PT as well, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Um, Everybody was a PT some, at some point. I remember this was before like when social media was like really leveraged on ads or organic content to promote it. Um, it was all about SEO and websites and print media and, you know, uh, newspaper uh, shit. 
And I had one guy, he called me, he goes, oh, um, 100 bucks a month for the, first three, for the first three months, I got you. I'll get you your ranking up on Google. I'm like, when, when am I expecting to see leads or, you know, people calling in? He'll be like around the third month. But you have to trust me on this. But because I met him in person, mm. I was like, bet. Let's give it a crack. And back then, I was 21, 100 bucks a month. That was a big investment for me. Yep. By the third month, you type in personal trainer Perth, there's me, number one. And I had so many people. I had people calling in from Gosnells, which is a while away. Mm. And I had 50 sessions a month. Uh, sorry, a week, 50 sessions a week. Bro, and I was a full-time uni student. That's amazing, bro, because like, I, want, I want to compare that to my story, PT. Yeah. Like, keep going. Yeah. So the lessons I learned from that is um, you need to stand on the shoulders of giants. You need to find someone that knows how to leverage attention better than you. Mm-hmm. And uh, the other lesson I learned is um, <laughs> get out of uh, – somewhere that has ridiculous overheads as soon as possible. The moment I moved out of the gym that was charging me ridiculous rent and, and set it all up in my living room, bro, that's when yeah, – It's uh, just full profit. Uh, yeah. Just, yeah, I was making 50K as a full-time uni student where all my uni student friends were working on weekends and I was just chilling. Yeah. But, yeah, and then unfortunately I didn't want to pivot to the next level. I didn't want to start my own thing where I had other trainers come in. Yeah. Had I known what I know now, I would have said any gym trainers out there that are looking for a space, yeah, for sure. I've got the cheapest rent in Perth, come to my studio. I am off every Tuesday and Thursday. You can use my studio and it will cost you 50 bucks a day. That's it. Mm. And there's 50 bucks a day I don't need and then just see if I can build that and yeah. then and then I would use that 50 bucks to offset my rent to the new studio and then just create a gym and go, hey, you want to upgrade from this lounge room to this facility with parking and not in a suburban area? Yeah. Let's migrate. And now, what I know now, I would have, I would yeah, have scaled. Yeah, 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 for sure. Well, that's funny because, like, I had a different mindset, bro, when I was PT. Mm. And what you, like, thinking about it the way you done it was, like, a very good, uh, you know, way to monetize personal training. But, like, why went into personal training not to make money but to decrease my expenses? Now, when you think about it like that, it's just like I didn't – I was like, how do I create a free life, right? And oh, yeah. Yeah, and like yeah. because I was going through some shit at the time and I was like I was in so much debt and bills to the point where like this – you can't actually – in my life in the situation I'm in and I'm living, I was like, fuck, i got nowhere to live and all that sort of stuff. I was just like I, there's not enough money per day or week that could solve my problem. So I had to create a free lifestyle. So I've said this before. So – to get to generate, so I call myself a human algorithm because I can generate leads nonstop, 100 a day. If I can just go for a walk, right? <laughs> and I utilize uh, I utilize uh, personal training as more of a vehicle to kind of make people respond because I look the way I do. And it was just like when I say again, I done PT not to make money but to decrease my expenses. So I focused on people having resources, and then I utilize that as credit to leverage what they had. So if I charge myself out like for 100 bucks an hour, then I'll do that. And then I'll try and lock them in for like two, three times a week. And then at the same time, I'm like, well, if I train you three times a week, it's 100 bucks an hour, it's $300 credit, and you have a restaurant, I'll get $300 credit in your restaurant. And then I had free food. You yeah. know what I mean? So yeah. that was kind of how I was able to like – Bartering. Barter, yeah. yeah. But that's going back to my village days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We learned how to village – our village to barter because we had no money. So we learned how to perform mm. to get Chinese to throw coins in the river, to use the coins to go and buy corn, to – to cook the corn in our hot pools and then sell the corn back to them. Yeah. It's like a, so anyways, the way I used to generate my leads was, like I knew, like again, back then, I knew that there was PTs that were better, that were better than me at understanding science. I was like, fuck, I'm not going to go to uni and learn about like toenails and how to grow. <laughs> <laughs> and I knew it. And there was like yeah, yeah. athletes, bro, that were like super passionate about it. And it's just like, but it's just like, I'm not going to act like I am this working lifestyle yeah. beast and muscle man and health fitness dude, whatever. But I knew how to make people happy and laugh. So I used to, stand, I used to walk to this cafe, bro, and it was down on a race course drive in Brisbane, a place called Cafe 63. And I understood the personalities in that area. And I used to ask people, I used to make, no, I didn't ask people. I used to make them ask me what I was doing. 
And it kind of opened up their mind based on being more curious about me. And I'll tell them what I think they wanted to hear. So they asked that. So I was just like, how was your day, bro? I'll stand in line when I see like a fat dude with a fat watch, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, you know what I mean? So it's just like, and that's, a, that's, <laughs> that's a kind of a metaphor, but it's kind of true. It's just like, well, this guy needs to train, but at the same time, he has money. And then yep. I'll articulate my service based on something that he needs based on convenience. So it's just like, you know, he'll go, oh, so what are you doing out here? I was like, oh, I'm just I'm kind of light, to be honest. I was like, oh, I'm just out here uh, seeing my client because they're, they're too busy to go to work or to go to the gym, sorry, before work. And um, I actually helped them train. And I dropped them off at work and that last, I created like I painted a picture based on a morning that I thought he'll be interested in. Which, oh, fuck, that's hustle. Yeah, yeah. And then instead of me, him, me giving him my number, I got his number. Then now I'm sitting in his lounge room eating his, eating his food from his fridge because I was able to kind of accumulate leads in person based on what I thought they needed and then build a relationship. And now I'm training all these people. And these people ended up having like businesses where I ended up kind of seeing problems and then solving those problems based on someone else's solution, whether it's marketing or whatever. And that's kind of how I got into what I'm doing you now. You pivoted. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. And I think, as I say, my mindset towards PT, and I think I got a bit of grief because I didn't, I wasn't really focused on health and fitness. I was just focused on movement. And making, hey, that's that's fine. Yeah, yeah, you get them like, up off just, the couch. That's a that's a huge win. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. from going from going from zero to one is is like the biggest step. It's like your first million is the hardest million. The next million after that is almost inevitable. Oh, um, I remember like story from of my uncle. He's a mechanic uh, in Russia. What's his name? Dima. Hey? Dima. 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 Yeah. Dima. He's passed now, but um, he. Uh, um, yeah, he would go into any like supermarket or whatever. Oh, Yuma, here you go. Grab yeah. a bottle of vodka or whatever. And um, he would, uh, I remember, <laughs> I remember I was in the car with him. This was like six, seven years ago uh, in, the, in the town. We were in a, like a small town in Kyrgyzstan, which is where I was born, former Soviet Union. We were, we were driving along and he's, he's, he's a pest. Like we're going, we're going one way and there's the traffic coming. And you can see this one guy coming. He's clearly slightly over the line. So my uncle purposely gets as close as he could to the line, just as principle. And then the whole, both the mirrors break, like break, smash into each other. We didn't crash, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> close. Yeah. They're still pretty close though. Because anyway, the mirrors are like fucking yeah, yeah, big yeah, bro. Fuck. Yeah. Anyway, pulled over. Guy comes out and he comes out, non-aggressive or anything, he just goes up to the guy. Shakes his hand. I learned this from him straight away. If there's ever someone I see that's aggressive to me or starting to be, I go up to him, shake their hand straight away, diffuse. Anyway, cops come and he's shaking all their hands. Not ass licking or anything, but they're all like his mates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's just like, this is what happened. But, um, yeah, he's, he's not everybody knew him. Like he was the guy that fixed your car. Mm. And he lived, we lived right, he lived right next to a, like a mechanic shop as well. And he, he had in his driveway, he had one of those pits where you can go underneath the car. Mm. And they're all <laughs> fucking using it. But I learned from him the, act, the art of bartering. Mm. And um, now my thing that I have is attention. Mm -hmm. I know how to get attention. That's number one currency, bro. Let's go. And some businesses that I've been a part of for years that I like, that I've been using, like Bully Butcher, for example, um, meat. Got dog food covered, got my missus food covered, got my food covered. Yeah. That's like the number one thing, you know. Haircuts, yeah. shout out Salim, the guy I yeah. sent you today. Yeah, but, yeah, bro. bro, like you go to their channel, it's just like the, all the viral ones are me. <coughs> and then um, so the, the haircut's covered, um, plus two, shout outs. <coughs> so they, they fit, they actually fit me. I remember hitting them up like seven years ago before any of this social media stuff and I said, Love to like take some photos for you guys. Like, oh, can you send us a video of who you are? Like, yeah. And I never did it. I was like, yeah, fair. I couldn't be bothered. And then eventually I got um, the TikTok attention and then natural gel. But unfortunately, some of these businesses that I really like, I don't have the time to really push and make go viral, even though I really like them because. I'm on that pathway at the moment where I really want to just get to the financial freedom first. Mm -hmm. And then from there, 
all I'll do with my days is help the kids yeah, yeah. and help I think those. That's exactly what I also but, said before. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. but, but I'll also help those businesses more. So I'm just hoping that they stick with me and believe that because a lot of the time I'm like, man, am I doing enough for these guys? They're giving me 150 bucks worth of meat, for example. Is what I'm like, because I do live streams all the time on TikTok and I'm eating my chicken wings that I bought from Bully Butcher. Everyone's talking about them all, every post. And I have about four or 5,000 people come across the live stream. And every five seconds, some smart ass is going, where are the wings from? Where are the wings from? Where are the yeah. wings from? And I'm like, that should be enough. But later on, I want lines out the door. I want them sold out. Yeah. I want them to go, Sev, there's not enough cows left in Perth. <laughs> 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 or chickens, we're out of chickens, yeah, bro. Yeah, we're out of chickens, bro. You, 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 you're completely, uh, um, you know, uh, the whole chicken Just extinct, bro. Yeah, yeah, we're, yeah, we're done. But, um, yeah, no, the lessons from bartering from, yeah. from my uncle, I translated it to here and I'm like, right, how do I shave the cost of living? If I could get a, br- a deal with uh, like a, a residential builder, there's, there's always a way, bro, because you got to understand. Like, you, it doesn't even have to be anything to do with the building, bro. Mm. Because, like, a bre- like, the guy might have a problem with his, his lawns in another area, and you are associated with the lawn mowing company, and then you just work out how you can fix yeah. the generator, like a consistent. Like, if you're promoting the the lawn mowing company, yeah. and then they're mowing his lawns for free, then you utilize that credit for your apartment. You know what I mean? It's just like you got to understand. How do you build an ecosystem around the idea of helping, and you just become the orchestrator, yeah, or the one organising it? That that's some that's some huge currency there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, my my dreams are like how how can I get it with an airline, for example? How can I get it with a hotel chain? How can I get it with? Um, yeah, we got some some talking to him, brother. I, no, like, yeah. I, got, I got some ways. But it's not like a selfish play. It's a it's a means to get to those other businesses around the world to help them as well. For sure. Because if I don't have those deals with those hotels and those airlines, then that means I have to somehow figure out how I can subsidise the costs for me to help the businesses overseas. Yeah, for sure. Unless they can pay it. But at the same time, bro, it's like they, they're still paying for things that you probably have access to as well. Yeah. So if you can kind of minimise those costs and, yeah. and, have, and provide more value proposition based on mm. what you do, which you have, bro. The other, yeah, yeah. The other thing as well, like I'm trying to also figure out is even though I get opportunities to go overseas to help other people, there are still bills to pay that I haven't subsidized through my leverage. So the bottom line is still that financial freedom that comes into the back. And, you know, maybe I should leverage a, uh, uh, I don't know, Warren Buffett style person that can help me with a hedge fund sort of thing, help me invest, how quick. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I thought you're still you're still hella young, bro. We're on the same yeah. journey, but I think you're on the you know if you ask the right questions, you get the right answers. Yeah, yeah. most people don't even ask questions. Yeah, and if you can ask questions with an open mind, willing to learn, even if you don't agree, mm-hmm. you kind of understand why yeah. people think the way they do. Then it's just like you want to start compounding knowledge yeah. and learning more and more as we go. I ask you, you've, you've, you're talking to a lot of people, uh, especially the last three days. I've seen your Instagram with the 50 different businesses, <laughs> and they're all there for you. What's your bullshit rate like? Like, how do you, how do you go? Nah, and how uh, quick? And how quick is it? It's like a smell. No, I don't know. <laughs> like you don't, you don't even know. But at the same time, it's just like you see based on behavior. So it's just like I take mm. everyone from a, I I treat everyone the same. So you meet someone, you say hello, you acknowledge, then you can kind of like, then the the road ends up going two directions. They start talking about themselves, or they start being interested. And then you take this road. And then so based on the conversation and then the energy in the room, but also um, after the conversation, then you can kind of just I, I like to watch. I like to watch how people behave and see if the actions through social media or what I hear or when I start like like I'll probably ask five friends that I think that knows you based on I was like, what do you think about this guy? It's like you you don't know. So I say it's pretty good, but at the same time, I don't have, yeah, I don't really know how to answer that. It's, yeah. like, it's, it's a feeling as well. It's a gut feeling. I'm, a gut learning, feeling. I'm learning how to trust my gut feeling as well because a lot of the shit that's kind of um, effed up in the past is just like I knew miles ahead. 
I just didn't do anything about it. I didn't say anything about it. So it's just like, I would like to say my gut. <laughs> Same. <laughs> my gut, yeah. At the end of the day, it happens for a reason. There's a lesson involved and whatever decision you make, unless you're insane, you won't make it again. Well, I think um, a lesson that I learned from my sister when she was talking about like when I was like 14, 13 years old and I still hold it to this day when she was talking about girlfriends and shit, it's just like you can't treat the next person like the last person. So it's just like if the last person fucked you over, it's just like the next person that kind of looks the same is not the same person. So don't they're don't, different. Don't take they don't take that like mm. the energy. And at the same time, it's just like I have friends that run with friends, but at the same time, it doesn't change. Oh, like it depends on what it is, what they've done. But I like to treat people like their own individual and how they treat me. And it's just like everything starts fresh, and then it just goes from there. The Russian way to do it is everyone starts at one hundred percent. Yeah. Until they fuck it up. And then worse – oh, the first time, like let's say they really cooked it, like they're an hour late or they flake or they <coughs> – I don't know, they, they stitch you up in some way. Mm. The first strike, and there's only one strike. How many points in the strike was depending on the – dependent on the, the oh. weight of the strike? There's some petty things, we but could. like it depending, it's depending on their accountability and their and their, you know, drive towards to make it better for. Like for me, one time I fucked up with a mate. I'll never forget this because I hate being late. I hate being late. And this time I cooked my calendar thing. I didn't put it in at all. Mm-hmm. You got a text message, Raya. I went. I went white. Almost lost hair. I reckon. Mm. Made it up because I know you like Jim Beam. A big fucking hundred and fifty dollar bottle. Yeah. And I was like, and he was like so surprised. He solution. Goes, solution. <laughs> and I was like, that's my gift. Yeah. Here is my peace offering. And I don't expect the same, but the next move from that person is they have to they have to do everything to make up for it. Mm. Because then what's to go? Yeah, for sure. But well, then they, after that, show, yeah. then after that, I'm only interested if if you don't do that, I'm only interested if you have something that is of value and you come to me, really. Um, yeah, but if you, if you haven't broken that 100% straight, let's hang, let's do something, let's do business, let's do hang, yeah, let's just hang out. Yeah, one, one thing I'm really kind of like trying to learn how to manage properly, bro, is it's like it's the amount of people that I care about and at the same time, the same amount of attention that I give to all the people I care about. So obviously, like traveling the world and stuff, even to my own circle, it's just like mm. I've been talking less. And it's just like, because it's just like, how do you, how do you just like still stay connected with everybody, even family, my sisters, my mom, dad, like I've been pretty hopeless at kind of like comps. It's just like, you know, trying to figure out, I guess that's just my own shit. I'm trying to figure no, out. No, i in the same exact scenario. I'm, I resonate with that hard. I feel, I talk, I think about that every day. I think I'm like, shit, it's been like six days since I called mum. Mm. How's my sister going in Melbourne? You know, just a text message. How are my good mates that I was talking to for years going? I mean, the ones that I know that are still going there, they're all supporting me and they're all commenting on my stuff mm. and they're all messaging me every now and then. I reply to all of them. But the ones I don't reply to are the ones that, there's no support there, you know, and oh. that made it easier for me. Yeah, true that. Like I have, I had, I had a guy come to my wedding, and uh, he's there's been no support. I'm not looking for the support. I'm just looking for a reply back. Mm. Like some people that I do it's try. It's nice to see though, eh? like because like yeah. even if yeah, it, it feels good support. Yeah. You see that meme, uh, it's like when you first start out and you're grinding, you're going hard and you're going for it and you just focus, there's no one in the bleachers. But then when you succeed, the whole stand's filled with everybody cheering for you, yeah. you know? And that's a drive for me. But at the same time, I'm, I'm always neutral. One of the other things mum taught me was live your life neutrally. When things go good, you celebrate them. Don't stay up here so, for so long because that can crash down and that drop from neutral to negative is a harder drop. If you stay neutral, you celebrate those wins for that day, go back to neutral 
If things fuck up, that drop's not that bad. Mm, sure. I think it just comes down to your own expectation as well. Yeah. Like, and I feel that, bro. And I think, mm. I think over the last 12 months, what I've really experienced based on um, my threshold mm. of excitement, of stress, of everything, it's just like gone so high where people are like, are you really excited about what you're doing? And I honestly reply, I'm like, nah, not really. And they're like, oh, what do you mean? I'm like, oh, I'm happy consistently. Like, I'll wake up and I'm just a happy person all day. Yeah, stoked. Even if there's a, even if something shit happens, like, don't really react because I'm like, oh, well, as I said before, I'm numb because I'm like, my threshold's so fucking Let's high. solve the problem. Yeah. Let's but, let's solve it. I'm, I'm straight into war zone. I, yeah. And it's just like, it's not if, it's when. Yeah. It oh, when. mate, if does not exist. Yeah. If, if like, does if not if exist. There's a problem. And that's like, a, when I was talking to someone about it the other day, it's just like hazards, for example. Hazards is like the, it's the opportunity for something to go wrong. And if you're going to identify something down the line, it's just like, now how do we create something for when it happens and then keep moving? What about if you overthink about the next hazard and then you hyper-focus about all the other hazards that pop up in that place? Well, it's different when you hyper-focus. I'm just saying acknowledge it. Well, is there a limit? Like, because then you're looking for perfection. Yeah, I guess so, but I guess uh, do your best and don't, you know, fucking just, like, you know, if, if yeah, it's, it's what we put on seatbelt, brother. Like, you know, it's just, yeah. like, it's just like, yeah, just. it's It kind of contradicts my my f- uh, bail uh, on the on the client the other day. I saw hurdles, but I also saw the lack of vision going forward that the synergy was not there anymore. Mm. So it was a hurdle, but it was also a realization that it's not for me, and I didn't want to waste any more time. So kind of contradiction, kind of true, you know. No, but you thought about it, and you had a reason, though. Yeah. Plus, I had external factors that were out of my control. Yeah, but I guess you only can make yeah. one decision, bro. You can only move forward one direction. Yeah. So that's the direction you chose, and you can kind of back up why you done it. Yeah. And then, bro, just keep moving, brother. Mm-hmm. What's your um? What's your like personal? Do you have a personal system that you just live by? I'm not talking about morning routine. Yeah. I'm just talking about like my like just muscle memory. Yeah, bro. Like I, uh, I say hello to people consistently. Like that's my thing. I say hello to a hundred people a day because every action has a reaction, good or bad, happy and sad. Yeah. So I think um, the opportunity is based on who you say hello to, not how you feel. And that's why mm-hmm. I have so many opportunities because like I could be having the worst fucking day in the world. And then, like, let's just say I'm in can distribution or whatever, or my sister needs a job or some shit. Like, and it's the opportunity for that factor does not come from how I feel, it comes from who I meet and then what they're a part of. And then, when you plant that seed and you water it, it can grow to something. It doesn't have to. I don't have an agenda when I say hello to people, but at the same time, opportunity come from, comes from people. Yeah. So, and yeah. it's just like I can do that effortlessly. And it's like that's that's kind of like when I walk into a room and I see I like walking in a direction where there's people where they rather than an alleyway because I'm like, well, every person has a history and experience. And I'd like to be a part of it, maybe. Yeah, so, oh everyone's a business card. Mm-hmm. Everyone's an opportunity. Uh I took an Uber to pick up the stickers. Yep. Right? From Juicy Fest. These stickers here. Yeah, yeah. And uh, this guy, his name's Sean, yeah, picked me up and, man, like got in and he's a FIFO worker, one week on, one week off because my number one question is, you do this full time? Obviously, he gets that question every second passenger. But then he goes, yeah, this and this, and I was genuinely interested. I'm always interested in what they do and why they do it. And then he told me he actually wants to come back into um, the building, building industry, but in sales, because that's what he did for the last 10 years before he started FIFO. Yep. And I was like, oh, building, sweet. And I told him about one of my clients, one of my former clients. And he goes, that's who I worked for before. That's crazy. And we just like connected, mm. right? And that's like a salesman's trick, find that connection as mm. soon as possible so then you can leverage it and, and build yeah. that relationship. Sure. But I wasn't even trying to do that. I was just talking to him because it's genuinely, I, like, I just like talking to people, you know? And... Yeah, before I left, um, and it's funny how it all rolled out. I was in all sorts this afternoon 
I uh, didn't have my shoes on because s- some other reason. I had my <laughs> shoes, had my socks, fresh socks, stance socks. Shout outs to Ether Care for the plug. Yep. And I had the, my shoes and my socks like on the shoes sitting on top. And I rushed in, sat down and we're at the red light just outside the studio. And I'm like, what the fuck? I only got one sock. Just as the light's about to turn green, I'm like, shit. I opened the door and there it was on the road. Grabbed it and then we're off we went. I was like, oh, fucking lucky. Mm. Then we got to the destination and I'm like checking. Yep, yep, should be good. W- left and he's backing out but he rolls down his window. He's like, hey, can I get your number? Let's connect. I'm like, absolutely. And I, as, I, as he did that, I looked in the back seat there's my car key. <laughs> <laughs> The universe looks out for you yeah, if sure. you connect with people. I think it's just like I call it the process of trust. Yeah. And the process is someone has to be comfortable with you before they trust you. And mm. during that entire process, bro, you can't force someone to kind of go through the process based on what you want them to do, right? It might take two weeks, two hours or two years or 20 years for them to go through that themselves. Game of patience. Yeah. And, yeah. Then, and it's just like, but it's like you can't, there's no limit on how hard you can network or how much, but it's just like, but there's a limit on how fast you can push your process, mm. right? So can't be Russian. Eh? I can be Russian. You yeah. can't be Russian. <laughs> yeah. Well, try. No, it's been it's been a it's been an interesting journey so far, um, and I've learned a lot, and I'm keen to learn more. You, you never stop learning, right? Nah, not at all, brother. Like, I'm still. Yeah. yeah. I'm yeah. learning a lot, brother. If you could go back in time. And tell yourself at 13 something, what would it be? Um, hmm. It's kind of hard because a lot of what I – like if I told myself one thing to fix, then I wouldn't have made the mistakes. You know, a lot of the mistakes that I mm. made. Um, but that's, ju- that's literally my answer. Yeah. That's literally my answer. <laughs> So I think, but I think if I was to kind of talk to him, I would let him know that everything's going to be all good. Yeah, give that confidence there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll say that. I'll just say, if I can just, if anything, the, the the decision you make, do it faster and harder, bro. Just <laughs> just do it with no, like, you know, everything's going to be all good. So I think during the 20s, you know, it's just like during, you, you learn a lot during a kid, why, why are you a kid? Then during the 20s, that's a time to try as many things as possible and become an expert at everything. During your 30s, apply what you know to what you do. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You, learn a, you learn a lot in your 20s as, you know, a fresh out of school adult mm-hmm. and then you can apply the, all of that from your first 30 years. Right. So once you turn 30, you're like, all right, it's time to execute. Time to go. But I can't, like I said all the, the sort of time, like I can't wait till I'm 40. Like the person that that dude is. No. Yeah. But then at 40, we're saying different shit. Yeah, yeah. Oh, but no, I can't wait till it. I can't oh, wait till yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I can't wait till yeah. I'm him. And then I'm like, well, yeah. I wonder what he's going to be like. You know? <laughs> so it's just like, I'm just enjoying it, bro. Yeah. Enjoying the, the entire process of the journey. All right. I'm going to give you some speed round questions. You grab that mic for some uh, for some product placement. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah. Well, uh, and just short answers. Uh, what do you try to avoid at all costs? Making people sad. What's the oldest thing you own? Uh, what sort of thing I own? I have my grandfather's um, wooden um, wooden elephants, but they're in New Zealand. Yeah. The oldest thing I own is this is my grandpa's wedding ring. Oh yeah, it's my wedding ring. We got we got a lot in common, brother. Yeah, yeah. bro. Um, if you were to get a tattoo tomorrow, what would it be? Um, the side of my head. Yeah, good enough yeah. real estate still. Yeah, so I'm getting the side of my. Just, just quickly tell tell people about this one. This one, yeah. um, I think. So I have hair. I'm bold by choice. Um, it was just a, a stage of my life a few years ago where, where I went through a metamorphosis, and um, I knew where I was stepping in business and also my position in life, society. We was going through a transition, and on behalf of Indigenous people, I wanted to kind of represent myself looking like this. Yeah. Because I think there's a stigma behind our people, but also culture in general. And I think it's not really looked at as, a, you know, business savvy or just whatever it may be. So I knew that I'll be doing what I'm doing now, but also what I want to do next year and so on. And I want to represent 
all indigenous people and culture this way. It looks sick. It looks so cool, man. Thank you. It looks sick. Um, someone were who who would be someone you'd like to trade places with for a day? Mm, like dead or alive? Uh, in their prime. In their prime, like people that are dead or alive. In their in their prime, whilst they were alive. Ah. Huh? In their prime, whilst they were alive. Probably my grandfather during the World War. Seeing what that was like. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Those, those are my yeah, those are my heroes, bro. Um, I got one more. Uh, da, 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 da. when you wake up in the morning, what is your number one priority? Bro, I look at all my emails. <laughs> <laughs> I pick up my phone. No, I want to say it's my priority. It's the Within first two thing. minutes, bro. Yeah. Within two minutes, I'm like, fuck. Yeah. Or, no, it's a good day today. I just like, is there any, oh, like, you know, I was like, what Fires? does today look like? Yeah, fuck. <laughs> like, it's like, actually, it's, it's crazy because I do go through, like, now it's different. When I was in the mines, I used to, like, like I was like a robot. And I used to just work and get up early, then train and eat and all that sort of stuff. And I think... I knew immediately what I had to do, but now I kind of wake up and it's just like my brain is clear. And then I start accumulating things that I'm doing and it's just like, oh, that's right. Oh, that's what I do. Oh, fuck, that's right. I'm in Perth. Oh, that's right. Dom. Oh, that's right. I was in Dubai, you know, and I'm just like, fuck. I'm after like two minutes and then also looking at my phone, I'm just like already buzzing. But at the same time, it's just like I live my dream. Yeah. I don't lose sleep, but I live my dream. Uh, but at the same time, I'm so excited about it. So it's why it's very easy for me to kind of like power forward. And yeah. Love that. Love that. It's a good extension. Um, yeah, this year already, it's been the most flights I've ever taken in one year. Yeah, how many? It's 26 so far. Yeah. Fuck, what, what are you like sitting in the, in the plane? Fuck. <laughs> I, I, just, I just take the L and, <laughs> um, and just cop the emergency exit yeah, yeah. for the extra bill. Um, some airlines upgrade, but the gamble is if it's already full, yeah. then they can't do anything about it. Um, but one of my dreams is to just afford business no matter what because, you know, business class is so ridiculously expensive. But one day I just be like, but the stars are also aligned yeah. and, you know, having a jet. Yeah, but it's all, it's all, it's all, it's all, it's all possible, bro. Yeah, it's all for possible. Sure. Right. Thanks for coming in. Thanks yeah, for chatting. Yeah. I know you're busy. Keen to get a feed? Yeah, hungry ears. Get a feed. <laughs> I love this, by the way. Yes, good. Yeah. We need to figure out how to make the foam one a little bit more on brand as well. Yeah. yeah. What does? Well, you can't even see it. Yeah. No, thanks for having me, brother. That's it. No worries. And uh, for everybody at home, um, keep an eye out on socials. Um, Juicy Fest coming out January. Uh, in nine different cities uh, across Australia and uh, New Zealand. Um, Raw, thanks for coming in. Thanks, and uh, looking forward to uh, seeing how Juicy unfolds for season two and beyond. Uh, for everybody else uh, as well, I'm holding up the Hom can. Um, quickly, just tell us about Hom. What's, what's, the, what's the name? What's in the name? Hom is an acronym for the House of Movements and... We have supplements and an energy drink, but it's not a supplement company. Home is a platform to express your passion for movements based on what you do. Because nice. your story is true. It doesn't matter what anyone says. Based on your passion, we have a byproduct of nootropics and supplements dedicated to what you do. If you're a real estate agent or a scaffolder or whatever it is, performance, focus, and sleep is necessary. Makes sense? Yeah. And I say I'm like the Red Bull of passion. And what we embody is like our, our why is uh, to impact an entire generation. You move one person. So it's all about telling your story and also encouraging what you do to exacerbate your day based on what you're already doing. Makes sense? So yeah. we have focus uh, supplements to help with mental cognition and mental clarity. Yeah. With mushroom extracts um, that help with creatives, anyone that likes to move their mind. We have non-caffeinated performance drinks or powders to help with uh, blood flow construction workers, dancers, even gym, not just limiting as a gym, it's about the 23 hours outside of the gym as well. And also a sleep supplement that helps with um, relaxation, and anxiety and stress. So hot chocolates, hot cinnamon donuts, and Oof. vanilla mango ice cream, hot drinks, but also cold drinks that help with REM, sleep, 
Jeez. for quality, quality sleep. But then last but not least, we have the energy drink, which is a um, – we launched this during Juicy Fest uh, 23, um, only in December or January, and it's uh, it's got no sugar. And what do you think of the taste, bro? Mate, I love anything that tastes good that doesn't have sugar in it. So – I'm I'm stoked and looking at the looking at the ingredients I'm a big big advocate for you know not having shit in your stuff for sure and well, what is um what's your what's I'm your, not getting red flags man I'm not shitting you um I mean sweeteners yeah it's fine and I love the I love the slogan you don't need wings to fly that's yeah, yeah. <laughs> clear your mind conquer doubt with curiosity move with purpose we got you the word, the words "we got you." I use the words "I got you" in my vows. Yeah, true. I was like, I, I, I would say, when this and this, ha- I forget the vows, but at the end of every line, I said, "I got you, I got you." But we got a lot in common, brother. That was my fucking vibe, <laughs> yeah. guys. Description has all the information. Juicy Festival, how to get a hold of Hom, and where to stalk this man right here. Uh, have any questions? Spotify is available. Uh, question Q and A and YouTube. Leave a comment and uh, all that stuff. Shout out to Bright Tank as usual. Good thanks. Peace. Hey. How did that go, bro? Yeah, amazing. What do you reckon? Yeah, good, bro.